Valerie for taking us into the scary world of what exists in labs, some labs in the region, and for highlighting the need for standards and quality assurance in this area. Next up, we have Jamelia Harris and Alex Jones, who will be both presenting on the drivers of health expenditure. Jamelia Harris and Alex Jones have both worked as economists for the government of Sierra Leone, Jamelia in the Ministry of Finance, Alex in the Ministry of Health. Over the past year, Jamelia has been working in Salises here in Trinidad, and Alex has joined the HEU research team, and together they are going to present on the drivers of prepaid health expenditure. Let's welcome them. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so we're going to talk today a bit about what determines prepaid health expenditure. Uh, so just to clear up some definitions before we start. When we talk about prepaid health expenditure, we want to focus on total health expenditure taken out, out of pocket. So we're looking at what is paid in or what is pooled from government resources, private insurance, or could be external coming in from aid. Uh, we're looking at determinants to try to understand some factors that drive prepaid health expenditures, and that would allow us to make some predictions. Um, so we're going to, sorry, before I go on, I'm Jamelia, this is Alex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Alex is going to talk a bit about the data uh, after I talk about the question. Then uh, I'll go into some of the model results, some econometrics, but we're going to make it policy friendly so we won't go too much into the model. Because uh, the model is really useful if people could understand it. Uh, and then we will talk about how we can make the model a bit better for the Caribbean. So we're focusing on the determinants of prepaid health expenditure. Uh, we're looking at this because of the debate in universal health coverage. Because uh, we, we want to see prepaid health expenditure because that doesn't take on a financial burden for those accessing the service at a point in time. Because uh, when we talk about coverage, we want coverage that doesn't lead to catastrophic health expenditure. We look at a global uh, set of countries, 192 countries over the period 1995 to 2013, and we're going to compare what's happening globally to what's happening regionally. We think it's important to understand what's going on in the global side of things, but also our Caribbean situation might be very different, so we want to see what's happening regionally. We'll then see how these two compare and contrast, and that would allow us to make recommendations going forward. Uh, why are we looking at this? Uh, I've explained a bit about that before, but a, a, a big part of it comes from our time in Sierra Leone and some of the things that we saw that was happening there. There's a huge push internationally and also on the country level to have universal health coverage. However, when you look at how much money that is needed to generate this, there's a huge resource gap. So we're trying to understand what is driving expenditure to be able to see how we can improve that in the future. Okay, hello everyone. And I'm going to just take us through the data we've used to try and answer this question. We've taken data from five main public databases. So that's the WHO's Global Health Expenditure Database, the World Bank Data Bank, IMF's World, uh, World Economic Outlook, OECD data, and PAHO's Regional Health Observatory. Between these five data sets, there's an amazing set of data which leads to some really interesting analysis, which, well, we think ours is some of, but there's a whole realm of other things that can be done. One caveat that I would highlight about the research we've been doing is that we're using current uh, US dollar expenditure. The reason we're using current rather than real expenditure is twofold. One, we feel that most policymakers are talking in current figures. And the second one is as external health expenditure is such a key component of prepaid health expenditure, especially in many low income countries, if we don't know what currency that was spent in, we can't adequately adjust for inflation. The variables of interest we've used to try and answer this question. The key dependent variable, obviously, is total prepaid health expenditure, which we've calculated as total expenditure minus out-of-pocket out expenditure. What we've 
included to try and explain prepaid health expenditure in countries around the world is one, GDP. The, the uh, hypothesis being, as countries get richer, do they spend more on prepaid health expenditure? The second one is government revenue as a percentage of GDP. So that's as government's capacity to raise revenue increases, does prepaid health expenditure also increase? The logic for this being that a lot of prepaid health expenditure is often financed through government. The third one is the OECD growth rate. So that's a, a key, well, the main donors of external health expenditure are the OECD countries. So the theory is, as, OECD, as the OECD countries are growing, do they give more money in health aid? The, f the fourth one is infant mortality. We're actually using this as a proxy for health sector sophistication. Are more sophisticated health sectors more expensive in terms of prepaid health expenditure? Infant mortality theoretically would work as a good proxy for this because in comparison to other causes of mortality, it's least affected by non-health sector components. The incidence of tuberculosis we're also using as a proxy for um, disease burden. So this is the question, do countries that have a higher disease burden spend more on prepaid health expenditure or less? Finally, we're looking at the proportion of the population under five. This is basically to get, capture different demographic profiles. Do older populations raise more money in prepaid health expenditure in comparison to younger ones? The last thing there is population, and this is just to, to uh, account to, put, to make the model per capita, basically. So now I take you through some of the key uh, comparisons between those, dependent, uh, those uh, independent variables and the dependent variable, so that you have something in your head to see what has happened over the years, both globally and in the Caribbean, before Jamelia takes you through our model results. This first slide is uh, uh, health ex total prepaid health expenditure. The red bars are the prepaid and the blue bars are the out of pocket. The one th and on your left, you're seeing global and on your right, you're seeing just in the Caribbean. The one key thing I want you to take away from this graph is that in 2013, there is a huge range in prepaid health expenditure around the, both around the world and in the Caribbean. So, Countries are spending anything between $10 per capita and thousands of dollars per capita on prepaid health expenditure. If we compare this to income, we've got a remarkably straight line here. We've taken the log transformations of both variables. The blue dots are the world and the red dots are the Caribbean. The main thing to take from this graph is that it, look, it looks, from just a straight comparison of the two, like there's a relatively clean uh, percentage change relationship. So a percentage change growth in GDP might lead to a percentage change growth in prepaid health expenditure. This is the graph comparing prepaid health expenditure and the capacity of governments to raise revenue. It's a lot less clear if we look at this graph if there is a relationship. But what you should take from this is that on the whole governments spend less, governments raise less than 50% of GDP in, in terms of revenue globally an average of about 30%. The Caribbean, it's less than this, averaging about 20 to 25% of GDP being raised as government revenue. In terms of what, do, what is spent on prepaid health, the maximum is the United States spending 15% of their GDP on prepaid uh, health expenditure. In the Caribbean, you've got Cuba spending 6 or 7% of their uh, GDP on prepaid health expenditure. If we look at the OECD growth rate, this is, remember, to try and explain what's happening to external health expenditure. The first graph on the left is global external health expenditure. A very rapid growth from 2002 right up to 2012, and then a slight drop off. In the Caribbean, we've also got a rapid growth from 2002, this is the middle graph, up until about 2011. The peak in 2011 may be due to an influx of aid into Haiti, following the earthquake. Finally, on, the very, on your very right of the graph, you're seeing the OECD growth rate. Towards the beginning of our period of study, it's actually a lot higher than towards the end of our period of study, leading to a kind of confusion. How come, as OECD growth has slowed, external expenditure on health has grown? A, a hypothesis just from this, from this graph might be that there's a lagged drop. So this drop you're seeing in 2013 could be the beginning of a lagged drop-off following the OECD slowdown after 2008. If we look at 
prepaid health expenditure against infant mortality. Remember, we're using an inf infant mortality as a proxy for health sector sophistication. What we have here is a very strong L shape. Basically, as infant mortality is high, that's where all the low health expenditure is. Where infant mort mortality is low, that's where all the high, infant uh, high health expenditure is. However, nonetheless, what we're seeing is, a, is an L shape. So for a lot of this, there's not that much variation. Again, the Caribbean is sitting fairly close in the corner, other than Haiti, which you can see with uh, infant mortality ranging between 50 and 100. We've got a similar relationship if we look at tuberculosis, again with the Caribbean sitting fairly square in the corner, and proportion of the population under five. So bearing in mind these things, try and keep that in your head about what's happening between uh, prepaid health expenditure and our independent variables, as Jamelia will now talk about the results of our econometric models. So the graphs give us a good idea as to what's going on at first glance, but we also have to bear in mind that all things work together. So we have to look at the variables together to try to isolate the effect whole and all else constant. Uh, so we looked at two different models. We looked at a static model. Uh, and in this model, we decided to go with fixed effects for those econometricians here, or we did the Hausmann test to check that as well. Uh, for the non-econometricians, it simply means that we think that there are some country-specific things that are happening that is not varying over time. This could be institutions, cultures, un unobserved, uh, so we account for that in the model. We also try to see if past spending on prepaid health expenditure is causing or having an effect on current levels of spending. That's a dynamic model. So there's a log in the dynamic model where you see y t minus one. That's basically what it is. So I'll just go through some of the results very quickly. Uh, in the table, uh, the columns are low, middle, low income, middle income, upper and lower, and high income countries. For initial results, we see that GDP is very, very significant for all levels of income. Um, GDP, government revenue to GDP is also significant, but this is more so for low-income countries. One of the explanations that we are postulating is because in low-income countries, they benefit so much from aid, they often have commitments to commit a certain amount of revenue to spending, so that accounts for a positive relationship. It's one of the conditionalities. Um, we are seeing a significant relationship with OECD growth, but this is negative. And a reason for this could be the lag that Alex explained before. Population is, ex is significant, but only at high income levels. This would potentially mean that in low and low middle income countries, total per capita prepaid expenditure is not trending upwards because as population is increasing, we're not seeing any significant relationship of a, a change in expenditure. Uh, in terms of demographics, population under five, we're not seeing anything significant, no relationships are significant there. With infant mortality, we expect that countries that are who, which have a, a lower sophisticated health sector would also be lower spending. So a higher level of infant mortality was associated with a low level of spending. But how does this connect to what's happening in the Caribbean? Overall, the model is not as good, and we'll explain some of the limitations after. For low-income countries, this is basically Haiti. And what is worrying here is that None of the results are significant, so we can't really say what's going on in the country that we need to know and help the most. Uh, for the other groups of income groups, the R squared is still high. We have the lowest R squared at, uh, adjusted R squared at 81%, but it's still lower than what we had in the global model, so we really need to fix this. Um, similar things are significant, GDP, now, government revenue to GDP is not significant, and one of the reasons that we, we put forward to explain this is because health spending in the Caribbean, uh, one, is often protected. So as we saw in Trinidad this year, there was a slowdown in revenue, in revenue collection due to the fall in oil prices, but we were assured that health spending would be protected. The other reason could be there's a lot coming from private insurance, 
So there's a, a mix. So even though there might be an effect due to government revenue, it might not be completely reflected because of the, the other dynamics that are happening. Okay. Uh, so other things were fairly uh, similar, but the population was not significant throughout uh, the, the different income groups as it was in the other model, and TB incidence is not important in the Caribbean at all. When we look at the dynamic model, there's also a big similarity, but now we see that when we include a log uh, of prepaid health spending, this takes away from the size of the coefficient of GDP. So yes, we can predict how much spending will be tomorrow based on what we know today, but when we include this variable, the income elasticity is not as strong. Um, so I'll just go through some key findings. Uh, GDP and population size are the main factors driving prepaid health expenditure in the Caribbean. Past spending is also important. Disease pattern is not significant in this model. And remember that for disease pattern, we were using TB incidence. But this could be because this is just not related to the Caribbean at all. But it is related in a global sense. But it shows that, yes, we have to be conscious of what goals are set globally, but we need to adjust those to what our realities are. We also need to fix our model. <laughs> uh, population structure. We saw some significance, but this was at the 5% level, whereas the other coefficients were significant at 0.1%. So I think we might need to look at not just the population under five, but how the demographic transition is moving in the Caribbean and movement, not just the, the structure, but the movement. So how are we moving from the, the working age population to older, uh, to uh, 65 plus? So not just the stock, but the flow. Uh, and of course, it's interesting that we're seeing that revenue to GDP is not so important because a lot of our policy discourse is about getting government to be spending more, but we also have to be looking at the other dimensions and employees paying in private contributions as well. Okay, just the last slide very quickly is that this has not taken into account efficiency or equity. While it is important to talk about how much money is being raised and how much money is being spent on health, we also need to bear in mind what is that money being spent on and how equitable are the results that are coming about from that. Thank you very much. <laughs>